Blue Screen of Death, aka Blue Screen, BSOD, Stop Error, or my personal favorite, Bizod, is an exclusive Windows experience generously brought to you by the people of Microsoft. And did I mention it's free? So the best fix would be never to use Windows again. Ah, 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 ah. That was my very bad Joker impression from Suicide Squad. If you want to see Joker, go watch Batman. If you want to see how to fix any blue screen of death, stick around. Hey name tags, this is Ash from Hill My Tech helping you going from newbie to techie. This video is not sponsored by anyone, but we are an Amazon affiliate partner, so any links below can help the channel get a small kickback. So Windows users around the world are far too familiar with this unwelcoming blue screen. Mac and Linux users do not usually experience bzod, i.e. their crashes are not usually blue, but other types of errors do occur. However, are less frequent, or so I'm told. Some of what I'm about to tell you comes from Chris B. Hoffman in this article from How to Geek, everything you need to know about the blue screen of death. Also, Microsoft's website does have some troubleshooting tips for blue screens. All links are below. And I quote from Chris, BSODs appear when Microsoft Windows encounters a critical error it can't recover from, requiring a reboot and possibly resulting in lost work. Blue screens are generally caused by problems with your computer's hardware or issues with its hardware driver software. Standard software should not be able to cause blue screens. If an application crashes, it will do so without taking the operating system out with it. Blue screens are caused by hardware problems and issues with low-level software running in the Windows kernel. When a blue screen occurs, Windows automatically creates a mini-dump file that contains information about the crash and saves it to your hard disk. You can view information about these mini-dumps to help identify the cause of the blue screen. End quote. This Toshiba satellite laptop with a Windows 7 kept crashing a few seconds after booting up every single time, regardless of which application was being used. So today I will show you how to fix almost any blue screen of death on any laptop or desktop computer. This should also work for any other Windows versions like Windows 8.1 and Windows 10. A little word of caution and a disclaimer first. Blue screens can have many causes and it's very difficult to pinpoint exactly the cause and by default its solution. So the following fixes are things that I usually do and it will vary for your own issue. But most of the fixes mentioned here should work for most situations. The other disclaimer, any repair carries a certain risk to self and devices and also can result in loss of personal data. So do at your own risk. The first thing you should do is take a note of the stop code if you can. Sometimes the bizarre screen is too fast to catch the writings, so one tip is to record the crash and play it back. Here we can see the stop code as 0x6051 and a long series of further codes in bracket. Since I'm not a software engineer, I couldn't tell you if the bracketed numbers are relevant, so I tend to focus on the first stop code only. The next thing I tend to do as a personal preference is to test for any hardware issue except for the hard disk and OS on the hard disk. And yes, I'm talking about booting the PC with a Linux Live USB disk, which I covered in this video. In this case, I was sure that all the other hardware of the laptop was functioning properly, which leaves me with only the hard disk or the OS or both to troubleshoot. Next, you should try to boot into safe mode. There are a few ways to do that in Windows 8.1 and 10, refer to this article for the methods, or Google and YouTube is your friend. In Windows 7, simply press F8 after restarting your PC until you get an advanced boot options. I usually select safe mode with networking. If you didn't manage to get the stop code earlier, you can also look for it in the event viewer. There are a few ways to access Event Viewer. In Windows 7, you can click on Start Menu, right-click on Computer, click on Manage, and go down to Event Viewer. In Windows 10, type in Event Viewer in Start Menu, click on the Desktop app, then Windows Log, then System. Once you've identified the stop code, type it into Google, in this case 0x6051, and with the word Hotfix, and check onto Microsoft's website to see if they have released a hotfix for it. 
In some cases, you can download the hotfix if available. Usually unzip it before double clicking to install the fix and in theory, it should work. Unfortunately, this was not the case here. The next thing you can do is to restore the computer back to an earlier point in time if you know roughly after which update or change did the computer start to crash. You may need to try a couple of restore points for that. Here, since there was no restore point created beforehand, so we go to the next fix. Restart the laptop, press F8 and look for last known good configuration, bracket advanced. Strangely, this time, after rebooting, the password was no longer working. This could be due to this password having been changed recently and the last known configuration reverted back to an older password. I'm not entirely sure about this theory. If one of you does know, let me know in the comment section below. So I did what I do best sometimes, hacking. I created an admin account with a new password and also changed the password of the existing account to another one. If you guys want to see how this is done, let me know and it can be a different tutorial. It looks like this one seems to have done the trick, at least in theory. There are a few other things that I did try before that and I would reboot every time but after a while I stopped rebooting so I'm not sure which one actually fixed it. So if this last step did not work for you, here are other things you can try. Bad RAM memory can also be a culprit. So while in safe mode, you can do a Windows memory diagnostics check. Simply click on start button, type in memory, you should see the Windows memory diagnostics. You can select between restart now or later for problems. If there are any issues, you will get a report, in which case you could try other known working RAM sticks to see if it resolves. Registry corruption and malware can also be another cause. I tend to use the following trio combination, i.e. AVG free, SpyBot free and CCleaner free as part of security and regular maintenance. I covered this in this rather long and boring video, but still with helpful content, so check it out. Feel free to also use other software for registry cleaning and antivirus and anti-spyware. Driver issues can also cause BSOD. Go into your computer management and look out for red X or yellow exclamation marks next to devices if any. Your options would be then to download and install the correct driver. But if that doesn't fix the problem, then removing that specific hardware altogether would be the solution. Warning though, you may not be able to identify the troublesome device easily, especially if it is USB related. And finally, after exhausting all other avenues, you have the good old restore back to factory settings or a complete wipe and reload, essentially meaning reinstalling Windows. Once you have fixed the issue, it would be a good idea to create a restore point immediately. Also, generally, you should be constantly backing up all your personal data. Remember guys, that this list of fixes may not apply to every single bizarre out there. Recently, I had an issue while trying to edit a video using HitFilm for Express. My PC kept crashing several times and always whilst trying to create proxies for video files. After some research, I determined that the issue was with HitFilm for Express itself and specifically during trying to create proxies of video files. The fix, after many trials of trying different GPU configurations and even reverting back to an older GPU driver, was that I simply stopped using HitFilm for Express for editing and I haven't had a single issue since then. This goes to show that Bissod can have weird causes and if all the above troubleshooting and fixes fail, you should try and use logic and determine what else could possibly be causing the issue. I probably should investigate this HitFilm for Express crash pretty soon. Now that the tutorial time is over, here is a slight update. Our family health issue is still not entirely resolved. I have plenty of videos to do, but time and situation isn't allowing. So many of you have asked questions about troubleshooting a laptop and desktop, and it's impossible for me to answer all of them in the comment section. So I am preparing a video response to cover all these problems. Just to reassure you that I do read your comments and I am working on the replies. Also, I have a very unique content I want to upload to do with cyberbullying, hate and trolling. I am just waiting for two more inputs, which will give me a total of 20 examples for me to share with you. So stay tuned for that. That's it for today, folks. You know what to do. Like, dislike, leave a comment and share this vid. Remember to subscribe for more helpful content. Thank you so much for watching. As always, this was Ash from Heal My Tech, helping you go from newbie to techie. So go ahead and unleash your true potential. Until next time, peace out.